Well, hello there, and welcome to Saw Bench Show number one. I'm finally getting around to making a saw bench. You know the kind that you kneel on, the low ones like this? I've been meaning to make one of those for a long time, and now's the time. I've been using my workbench as a saw bench, but uh, I'm going to be turning this big old board into one solid, sturdy saw bench. So, here we go. Now, what is a saw bench and how is it different from a saw horse? Well, let me show you. A saw horse is used like a trestle. They're used in pairs to support a board while you're cutting it. And the trestles, or saw horses, are usually have a top that's on edge. A saw bench is very frequently used by itself. And the top is wider, like a small saw bench. And that allows you to saw shorter lengths of boards in your shop without using both saw horses. So uh, that's probably the main difference. They're also lower. They're about 20 inches. That's about the ideal height for a saw bench. And that's so that your knee can bend exactly where it needs to when you're sawing. So that is that. Now, there are many, many different designs of saw benches. And when I'm designing something, one of the things I like to do is go on the internet and look at hundreds and hundreds of versions of what I'm trying to make. And then I pick and choose all the features that I like, put them all together, and combine them into one design that works best for me. And that's what I did with my saw bench. So let me show you. Here is a little model. I'll thank you not to chuckle. I did this for your sake. I don't normally make dollhouse furniture, but you can see clearly what I'm about to make. Now right away, let me just show you some of the features. Right away, you'll notice that the legs on the one side are splayed out. They're on a one and four slope, and that's for stability. But the legs over here join the top vertically. And that is so when I'm sawing down this side, if I choose to, my saw will never hit my legs. So it's splayed on one side for stability and straight on this side, so the saw misses it. And here is the top. You see it's wider. It's going to be about 8 inches wide and about 32 inches long. And it has what I call a bird's beak on the end. And that's so when you place a board on it, like this, you can rip between the bird beak and it's supported on both sides. If it's a thin piece of stock, that's pretty helpful. Or you can saw along this way or even cross cut like this. And you may have noticed a small hole here. The hole is for a hold fast like this if I want to secure something to my bench top. Now I'll be using this not only as a saw bench, but also as a mini workbench, as a seat, as a step stool, that sort of thing as well. So it's going to be a, a lot of fun. Now let's talk about the joinery. The base is all going to be mortise and tenon joinery. And I'm thinking about using wedged mortise and tenons or possibly drawboard mortise and tenons just to get some experience doing that. And for the top, I'm going to have, for the, for the splayed legs, I'm going to have a sloped tenon that goes into a sloped mortise on the top. That'll be a little bit tricky to make. And I could also use a mortise and tenon on the front legs. But then I remembered a TV program, Woodwright's Workshop. That's Roy Underhill's show that he's been doing on PBS since around 1827 actually 1979, but um, he did a project that was very interesting. He made a small work bench just like this one. It had the splayed legs and it had the straight legs in the front. And he used a joinery technique for the front legs that I thought was really neat called a rising dovetail. And let me show you what that is. Here's a practice one I did. Now imagine this is the top. And this is the leg coming up to join the top. And you can see here, 
It's dovetailed here, but the thing that makes this different is the top of the dovetail has a bevel on it as well. The dovetail is dovetailed. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So now the question becomes how do you put that together? You can't push it in like this because the bevel won't allow it. And you can't push it in from the bottom because the dovetail prevents it from going that way. How do you put it together? How do you take it apart? Well, let me show you. Got it there? Mm -hmm. The dovetail rises up from the bottom. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. It comes in. The back is sloped and the socket is sloped as well. It enters in from the back and from the bottom and then it slides up rising into position like that. Isn't that amazing? Now I'd seen the rising dovetail before but one thing I hadn't seen before was how Roy applied this joint with his workbench. If you'll notice the back legs are on a one and four slope and what he did with his rising dovetails is he put a one and four slope on the rising dovetail and that means that when you join the top onto the base everything joins together and slides together on a one and four slope and that is pretty neat. So all due credit to Roy Underhill, he did this on his TV show several years ago and I'm following in his footsteps now and going to be doing it with my saw bench. So pretty neat, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to do. Um, these are tricky to make, I must say, uh, a lot harder to lay out and a lot harder to cut and fit. And if you decide to do this, make some practice ones. Here's some practice ones that I did. And uh, let's see here. You can see this one here. I got the, the slope incorrect. It's got a big gap there. And you can see all these practice layouts I did just to uh, get it the way I wanted. It does go together, but uh, needed work. Here's my second one. This one goes together a little better. It's a little loose, but I got my slopes right. So I'm just warning you, if you get to get, decide to make this, uh, make some practice ones and get some practice because it's a real brain twister, believe me. So that is that. Now let's talk about this big hunk of poplar. I was going to use 2x12 lumber construction material, uh, but I went to my local lumber mill and was looking for maybe a nice piece of pine that I could use. I didn't find any, but I came across this beautiful piece of poplar. It's 8 quarter, that's 2 inches thick. It's about 8 and a half feet long and almost a foot wide. And I thought it would be just perfect for a really heavy duty workbench. It was rough sawn, and before I took it home, I asked them to surface it three sides. And what that means is they ran it through their planer and made it equal thickness and then they ripped it down one edge and gave me a nice straight square edge. So it doesn't have cup, it doesn't have much of a bow, but it does have a little bit of a twist. Now to get that twist out of this whole length of board, I'd have to remove a lot of material. So I'm going to cut it into lengths that are closer to the finished lengths that I need. In this case, it'll be about three equal lengths. And that's going to minimize the amount of twist in each board that I have to take off. Also, I'm going to rip it into three widths for my base as well. And that will further minimize the amount of twist that I have. Now my cross cut saw, my hand saw, is 12 teeth per inch and I'd be here all day trying to cut through this way and also rip that way. So this is a perfect opportunity for power tools to come to the rescue. So I'm going to cut that to the dimensions I need on power tools and when we come back we'll take it from there with hand planes. Obviously we're back and here are our boards. I used my hand saw to make the cross cuts. I was kind of surprised, but it worked very well. And I did, down in the basement, use my table saw to rip these to approximate width. So uh, now we're ready to uh, fine tune these and get them nice 
and flat and straight. So let's look at some of the, uh, the planes I have to do that. Um, let me just out of the way. The first plane for this kind of thing is called a scrub plane. Now this is a bit extreme for what we're doing with these boards because they're closer to finished. But for rapid stock removal, this is the tool to use. Look at that heavily cambered blade. The camber is the curve along the front edge of the blade. That's going to remove a lot of material as you go, and it leaves these scalloped grooves across the wood as it tears and cuts the wood along its way. It's uh, more than we need, but for a really, really uh, rough stock, this would work uh, just fine. Most people, however, start with a plane like this, a number four or a number five, and they put a moderately cambered blade in it. And you can see this one here. This can remove a lot of material as well, but it's uh, not quite as drastic. That's about uh, between an eight and nine inch radius right there. So that's going to be the first plane that I use in working with these boards here. And then, after I get it roughed in, I'm using my jack plane in number five, and this blade uh, doesn't have much camber in it at all. It's pretty much straight across with rounded corners on it. So as I get closer and closer to the finished board, I get smoother and smoother cuts. Now, to get the board nice and straight and flat, the best plane is this number seven joiner. Uh, it's really, really long. It's actually 22 inches long. And what it can do is bridge all the high spots and uh, take them down to reach the low spots on, a, on the edge of the face of a board and make everything nice, flat, and straight. So that is what I'll be using next. And then finally, I have another four here that's uh, set up for smoothing. So the last plane I use is going to be my number four. Lucky me, I don't have to change the blade out. I've got one dedicated for smoothing and the other one dedicated as a scrub plane. So uh, let's get started. We're going to clear the decks here and uh, come right back. I thought we would start with our top board first. Now, if you remember, this was cut from the long board and the long board was uh, surfaced three sides by the lumber mill. Uh, it has a little bit of a twist and a little bit of a bow that we still have to take out. So that's gonna be the first thing that we do. Let me secure it here on our bench and then we shall get started. Okay. In order to fix the twist that it has, I have to find it and be able to see it. So what I'm going to be using are these winding sticks. In this case, they're made out of aluminum. You can make them out of wood as well. You can get these pieces of aluminum at your home center, and uh, they work just fine. And what you do is you place one on one end and one on the other, and any twist is going to be revealed by the offset of these winding sticks. So I'm just going to sight down the edges and see what I see here. Yes, that far corner there is high, and that means that this corner over here is high as well. They're twisted this way. So uh, I'm going to knock these corners down first, and let me just mark them. Mark here and mark there, and use my plane this is my scrub plane of sorts to get started. Now the, uh, the grain on this particular board reverses. This is with the grain going this way, but on this part closest to me, the grain actually is going this way. So I may have to swap the board in for end as we go, but uh, that's how it goes with, uh, with boards. There's never one that's perfect. They're always different. So let's get started here. That's a lot. That's still a lot. You can see what this takes off. I'm going to 
try this one here. I think it's going to fight me, but let's try it. Not so bad. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's check it a little bit closer here. Still pretty good. Let me mark that a little bit. Where'd my pencil go? dead on there. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to switch to my jack plane and continue on. length here. pretty good. I'm going to try my number seven. Okay, I think we might be there. Let's check it for a wind here one more time. <sighs> That's good there. It's good there. That's good there. Okay. All right, no more wind. Let's check it this way. 
that way. And I think I've got it. Boy, that was a bear, but we got the twist out of it. We're nice and flat and we're nice and straight. So I think that's as far as we're going to go this time. Uh, when we come back, uh, the other ones will be done because I want to move on to the rest of the project. And I will be using a thickness planer on the other side, just so you know. Uh, so uh, I'm going to take a break. And uh, thanks for stopping by. And see you next time. <laughs>